How to graph y equals one half to the x power. This is Tom Reardon, math teacher from Ohio. You will need graph paper and a pencil and press pause anytime as needed. If you don't have graph paper, you can download this PDF at this website, which can be printed with 20 grids on each side. Y equals one half raised to the x power. So you'll need a grid, and we encourage you to make a table. And these are the seven values that we'd like to start with. So go ahead, pause the video, complete the table. These are the values we hope you received here. One half to the third power, one half times one half is one eighth. The negative three, one half to the negative third, the negative would make this reciprocal, 2, and 2 cubed is 8. We'll go ahead and plot these seven points, starting with negative 3, 8 going left to right here, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, has a y-intercept at 1, and then these fractions get smaller and smaller and smaller. Connect the points. Looks like this. So we need to investigate the end behavior. That is what's happening at this end of the graph and what's ending, happening at this end of the graph. As x gets very, very large in the positive direction, what happens to the values for y? For example, if x is a thousand, which is not really large in the scheme of things, but one half to the thousandth power would be a half times a half times a half, or it could be one over two to the one thousandth, which is one over a huge number, which is very, very small, very, very positive, but close to zero and positive. And so how do we show that on the graph? It kind of flattens out as x gets larger and larger right there. And that makes the x-axis, which is the line y equals zero, a horizontal boundary line, and we call those boundary lines asymptotes, asymptotes. As x is very, very small, meaning negative, but a large in size, out this direction, what happens to y? For example, if x is negative 1,000, What's happening to y? One half to the negative thousandth. Again, that would make it two to the positive one thousandth. And that would be a very, very large positive number. So our graph would take off over here. So some terminology uh, for this. We do have a y-intercept at one. We also have y equals zero, a horizontal line, which is an asymptote, which is also the x-axis boundary line. And now we're ready to do the y equals one half to the x dance. So we'll start off with the y-intercept. And then from the origin, we'll go right one up a half right two only up a quarter, and right three up one eighth, getting smaller. Going in the other direction, left one up two because one half to the negative one power would be the reciprocal, which is two. Left two up four, and left three up eight. Connect the points. And remembering the um, end behavior that we talked about before. A graph that's shaped like this is one example of exponential decay, meaning as x gets larger, the values decay, they get smaller. As opposed to y equals 2 to the x, it was exponential growth, got grew, this is decaying. That's the phrase we will be using.
and then domain and range. So we'll go ahead and look at the graph and the table simultaneously here. And so for the domain, you'll notice that the x axis has values all above it, all above it. So the domain is all real numbers, which we will use that fancy script R. The range is not all real numbers. In fact, it starts at zero, but does not include zero. And anything larger than that, it has either values on the left or x values on the right. So those are the positive real numbers. And the way we write that is the set of all y's, such that y is a member of the real numbers, and y is strictly greater than zero. Note zero again is not included because the x asymptote is an asymptote. Strictly greater than zero. So where can you see this curve in the real world? So here's an example we found online. This is an exponential decay dealing with half-lives. We encourage you to interact with another video in this series.